So, what? We're what, back. Yeah. What did we do? I can't remember anything anymore. Oh, no. Yeah, it's been a few months. Um, we basically had a summer break, a much needed summer break. Yeah, wakeboarding, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just <laughs> constant adventures around the globe. No. Um, uh, we're, we've been thinking about changing the format a bit, um, and there's going to be uh, some changes in what we're going to do. Uh, and But this first show, we just thought we'd do like basically what we did last summer in terms of watching movies. Mm. Um, picked a few that we've both seen and picked a few that we've only one of us has seen and yeah. we'll talk a bit about them. It's going to be a, the, the format's going to be a bit shorter. We're going to make like maybe 10 minute videos and then push them out. Uh, not all at once like before, but uh, sort of intermittently. No more binge watching everybody. <laughs> no more. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's going to be a change of name probably at some point and we're going to have to come up with a new intro. Mm. But um, Probably not for this episode yet. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I, I think that we're just going to think about just having one video out every few days or something like that, about 10 minutes or 15 yeah. minutes or whatever, and try to push them out like over the week um, so you won't have to take up so much of your time just watching one ep one long episode. Um, there's going to be some different things that we're going to try out. We're going to probably talk a bit more about, also about movies that that aren't necessarily in the theaters now, but like classics. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, Just and, yeah. Yeah, playing with the formula, trying yeah. to expand it in different directions and seeing um, because it's it's a really really large field when you think about it movies and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be just the movies that are coming out right now but it entails all the past the history of movies also so it's, it's going to be sort of like a lateral move in that direction also at the same time yeah but let us know if you think that this is a good idea if it's a bad idea um i think that I'm still really interested in doing a show every once in a while that re goes really deep into one single mm, movie that, yeah. that really interests both of us. But uh, then it may be easier for you to, as what as viewers, to to get like 10 minutes for about one movie and then not necessarily delve in, into that uh, deeper. But so we're going to just, you know, like, like Tero said, just play with it a bit. Yeah. And um, yeah, tell us what you like and what you don't like, if you want to. So, Spike Lee's new joint. Yeah, um, there's, a, there's a big thing made of it in Finland. Just because we, there's finally a Finnish actor, <laughs> finally one Finnish actor in it. Uh, Jasper Pakkanen plays one of the uh, clansmen, so um, and he's been a relative unknown in the international scene, apart from being a regular on the Vikings yeah. uh, TV series, and um, and he did a good job in this movie. I think really, really good. Yeah. Um, other than that, I have a bit of a problem with Spike Lee. Usually, the movies that I like and the movies that I own that Spike Lee's done are uh, 25th Hour, um, That's really good. Yeah. Uh, um, Clockers, and, and uh, I have oh, uh, uh, Summer of Sam. Mm, yeah. um, and Clockers is interesting to me, both mostly because it's uh, the the visual aesthetic. Mm. It's it's a very spikely kind of movie, but there's a there's a certain kind of visual aesthetic that he experimented on in that movie, and I think that makes it in interesting. Twenty mm. fifth Hour and uh, Summer of Sam both deal with non specifically. 
uh, African, African American yeah. issues, yeah. and that's and every time I feel that that Lee tackles African American issues, he's such an angry guy yeah. that a lot of the times the movies fall short, I, or I, they feel preachy to me. Mm. I mean, I know a lot of people who love Do the Right Thing and Jungle Fever and Mo Better Blues and all that, all, all, all his movies, but, but I, I just, I, I have a hard time relating to them, not because they tackle black issues. Mm. I, I'm interested in that aspect of American culture, but the, the problem that I have with them is that they get too preachy. Mm. And, and there were elements in this one as well. I mean... There are the things that the sort of so violently underlined mm. uh, racial things that were going on in the movie. I just, I just couldn't get behind them because they felt so forced. It just mm. wasn't. I, I felt that it wasn't like a, with a lot of the movies. I felt that they aren't. They aren't as effective as movies as they are as propaganda. Mm. And that's difficult for me because mostly when I look at movies, I'm not looking for propaganda. I'm yeah, looking that, for, yeah. you know, entertainment. And that was really the thing that is sort of actually, um, I um, kind of figured out what I was watching um, somewhere during the movie. And um, when I figured out that what I was watching was not actually uh, uh like a like a like a, um how do you say it like a full movie like a complete just a movie basically yeah. it's not just a movie it also has this propaganda element to it so um but then when i realized that the viewing experience became something different so it sort of was okay in my in my eyes and i understood and i uh, i kind of get it because it's 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 an uh, it's an important issue yeah. so i think it's it's i mean it's not that bad to use cinema to sort of underline these yeah i I, I, I agree but it's i agree i i don't think that that's the problem i think the mm. problem is that when he should be when he should be using a uh, 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 a screwdriver he uses a jackhammer. That is true also because I was wondering if the same effect or maybe an even more powerful effect could be achieved by simply telling the actual story yeah. without really like you know pushing it like making it so damn obvious Yeah, in a lot of scenes that and I understand him being angry. I mean, I, I think that Spike Lee's got more reasons to be angry in the current state that America's in mm. than he has had previously. I mean, he's had reason to be angry before, but I think that there's, it's much more now with True. Trump's America. Yeah. So fuck you, Mr. Trump, for making Spike Lee's movies even worse than they were. <laughs> in my... <laughs> in my <laughs> Um, in we my will opinion, add that to your scenes. <laughs> yeah. uh, but especially in the end, when they showed the, I, I understand yeah. why he put the contemporary mm. scenes of street violence yeah. in that movie, but it felt just so. For me, for it took me, me out. Of the for me, experience. it was sort of interesting because that was the. It was that was sort of the let's call it the fun part of the experience. <laughs> no, but because I've I've never seen anyone do that with a movie. Yeah, that is yeah, run in yeah, a theater, yeah, and it yeah. was funny when we walked out from the movie theater. From the uh, uh, there was the, um, a security guard at the door, and that was the first time I have ever seen a security guard when I exit the movie theater. Yeah, so it was funny because. Uh, it has to, it was, it's funny when the fourth wall, fourth wall is so, it's sort of so punched through so um, aggressively in a way. Yeah. It, it, it makes it, an, it makes it an interesting experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I don't think that there were, I mean, I, I think that it had, 
some good performances in them, but it, it, it also, I think it was hampered by the fact that, like for example, Pakenham was really good in mm. it, but the lines that he's been given makes him automatically into this complete caricature. You for the white race, Ron? Oh, hell yeah. You're taking this Jew lie detector test. Yeah. There's no, I don't think that there's any sympathy created by that character at all, which makes him a very one-sided kind of yeah. thing. And, and so it so clearly paints everybody as either being good or bad, being black or white, no. uh, that it just, it, I, I think that in terms of narrative, it's less interesting. Um, I like the visual aspect of it. Mm. I, I, I sort of, it's funny that it's Denzel's son that's now <laughs> continuing being <laughs> Denzel <laughs> in Spike Lee's <laughs> movies. Um, and, and I think, well, Adam Driver's a good, he's a good actor. I have problems with Adam Driver because he's, th there's something about him that rubs me the wrong way mm. in a way, but I yeah. think that he is a really, really good actor. Yeah, and I think he, he was really, really good in this one as well. Um, but, um, uh, but yeah, I, I, I think that that's, this was one of the, there's, I have this certain, there are these certain films or this certain kind of uh, thing that I, I look for in some films where I think that the, the, the trailer is better than the movie. Mm. Uh, I think that happened with uh, Nicholas Winding Refn's uh, uh, Bronson. Mm. Bronson has a really, really, really good trailer and mm. it's an interesting film, but the trailer is really it's much better than the actual mm. film in my mind and here as well when i first saw the trailer i thought this is really good this no. is really really interesting but it doesn't the the ideas that are sort of planted in the trailer for me just don't quite measure up to the film itself the the joke goes a bit off and it, it it's again it's that's, that's a good the, point the, actually i think it's also to do with that propaganda thing that it's it's just it 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 just hits you in the face so many times, mm. so many times, so many times with the same message. Mm. And it just gets a bit tiresome. Yeah, when you think about um, if you want to compare films like, uh, when you think about something like Get Out, yeah, and the way it deals with this sort of like an issue. With so, so much more grace. Yeah, and it's sort of like this, yeah, and this hip, uh, almost, hyper complicated way of dealing with it yeah and this was really like this sort of like uh everything is what it is shown to be so yeah way. yeah interesting though i think jordan peele yeah, produced yeah yeah so. um which is you know but then I mean, again yeah. i mean it's it's different instruments in a yeah. way yeah yeah and I, I i think that pretty much spike probably pretty much does what he wants no yeah, i think so too. Uh, so I think that Peel's just glad to be a part of Spike's <laughs> film, yeah, basically. Yeah. But I don't think that he's had that kind of um, control over, mm, no. over it. Um, yeah. Um, I've got little else to say. If, if you're in interested in Spike Lee movies, I think that this is a perfectly good example of it. Uh, a, a lot of critics said that this is the best Spike Lee movie in years, and that may be true. For me, I always have a bit of a problem with in relating to his movies simply because he he just seems um, his he his skills as a director sort of often gets lost in his anger, mm. um, and that's. But if you like, I'm yeah. Spike Lee. Yeah, this is yeah. Spike Lee being very angry. Yeah.